It's very fun to see that my reading mood is literally going like this. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So even though it is already the middle of August, late August even, I still wanted to do the mid-year book freakout tag because I always really enjoy taking a look at the books that I've already read this year and kind of seeing my favorites, my least favorites, and also going through some statistics because I am currently tracking my reading on Storygraph and they always give the best pie charts. So I thought I would go through a couple of these statistics to show you how my reading year is going. I made screenshots of all of them so I can look at them on my phone. First of all, my reading goal. My goal is to read 50 books this year and I'm currently on 34, which means that I am three books ahead of schedule. I really should be able to do this. It is it's not my best reading year, but I'm happy with the amount of books I read and the, you know, the type of books that I read because there have been very good ones. But last year and basically all years before that, I definitely read more, so I hope I will reach my goal, 50 books. The moods that I like to enjoy reading are interesting reflective, emotional, dark, mysterious, adventurous, challenging, and all the like inspiring, relaxing, hopeful, funny books, lighthearted, <laughs> not so much. I'm very much into the darker books this year, which is surprising. <laughs> um, this is always very fun to see the different types of moods that the books have that I'm reading. When it comes to the pace, many of the books I like to read are medium paced books and then we have a couple of fast and a couple of slow paced books. Makes sense, I do like a medium paced book. If it's like super super quick and fast paced I'll just read it too quickly basically and just fly through it so much. Whereas with a slow paced book it can take me a very long time and sometimes I don't really like that. So medium paced Sounds good. The page number, I don't really read many really big books as you can see, only a few percent are 500 plus pages. Then most of them are below 300 or with between 300 and 500, which also makes sense. I'm not the best with reading big tomes. Fiction versus non-fiction. I like that I've read nearly 20% non-fiction because I love non-fiction. I love learning about new things. I love learning about new people. So this is really fun to see, almost 20% non-fiction, but of course the majority is still fiction. And then when it comes to genres, the majority of the genres I read are literary, contemporary and fantasy. And then we have just lots of little smaller genres that I didn't really read that much from, but it's fun to see that literary fiction and like contemporary literary fiction are definitely my most read. And it's very fun that fantasy is in the top three because last year and the year before that, I didn't read that many fantasy. So the fact that I've already read more fantasy this year is very fun because oh, I do love myself a good fantasy now and again. Okay, two more. First of all, the number of books and pages. Um, I crossed out the minutes because I, I'm also listening to audiobooks, but I didn't really calculated that correctly in Storygraph. So I'm just going to look at the big, you know, type of books um, that I also listen to, so oh well. But it's very fun to see that my reading mood is literally going like this. <laughs> <laughs> Legit a wave. So it's very clear that my reading mood has lots of ups and downs. In total, I read nearly 10,000 pages, which also includes audiobooks, and the 17 hours is not accurate because I didn't put the audiobooks in correctly. But yeah, this is my reading mood. And then lastly, my average star rating is a 4.02. Very good. I'm very happy that I kind of know which type of books I know I will enjoy and definitely listening to my friend's advice as well with books and recommendations. So I'm very glad that, you know, I've read so many four and five star books already, as you can see, lots of three stars too, and not really anything below three stars, which is also good. Okay, but now it is time to take a look at the questions for the mid-year book freakout tag. I love how long this tag has been going around booktube already, and I just love doing it. So let's take a look. The first question is the best book you've read so far this year. I definitely know which one this is. Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. This is his newest sci-fi novel. Andy Weir is a writer who also wrote The Martian, which I absolutely loved. But this book is even better. Oh my goodness. It takes place in space. It's about a man who needs to save humanity. It was so freaking good. Five out of five stars instantly. So if you like sci-fi and humor. This is very fun as well. This is the book for you. The next question is the best sequel you've read so far this year. Fun fact, I have read zero sequels this year. I do not really read book series because I'm so 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 bad at reading book series, so I've decided to not pick up any book series, which means that I also have not read a sequel this year, which is surprising. Number three is a new release you haven't read yet but want to. 
I'm not the best with new releases, but sometimes when I work together with Book of the Month, they send me a couple of new releases. And one of them that I was really interested in is called Shark Heart, A Love Story by Emily Heber. This is kind of a magical realism. It says, a debut novel about marriage, motherhood, metamorphosis, and letting go. This love story begins, begins with newlyweds Ren and her husband, Louis, a man who, over the course of nine months, transforms into a great white shark. This sounds super interesting and unique. So this is a new release that I'm definitely really interested in reading. Most anticipated release for the second half of the year. Even though I just told you that I'm not the biggest fan of like keeping track of all the new releases, there is one that I'm really excited about, which is Dolly Alderton's new book. It's called Good Material. I have no clue what it's about, but it's Dolly Alderton and I love Dolly Alderton. And this is a fiction book, I think. And I really enjoyed reading her other fiction book, Ghosts. Her non-fiction books are definitely my favorite though, but I'm super excited for Good Material and will be getting that one when it's released, which is a surprise because I don't really tend to pick up new releases that often. Oh, and also for all the duchies out there, who overlay Vic. This is such a classic for Dutch girls. When we were young, we had this writer called Francina Ohm and she wrote all of these books for young girls called How Do I Survive? For example, how do I survive my first kiss? How do I survive high school? How do I survive my first boyfriend? How do I survive myself? And you follow this girl who was, you know, a teenager learning all of these new things about life and that book series was absolutely brilliant. But now she wrote a sequel, like, years and years later for adults. So everyone who grew up with her books can now read this book about being an adult. How do I survive being an adult, basically? I am so excited for that one. I'm definitely going to pick up that one, but it's only in Dutch because it's a Dutch writer. Oh, I'm so excited. Number five is Biggest Disappointment. My Brilliant Friend by Elena Ferrante. I hoped I was going to love this book. Everyone was raving about it. You know, it's becoming so much more popular again because of TikTok. And I thought it was really disappointing and I really was not invested in it at all. I enjoyed it, but I was honestly a little bit bored sometimes. And also the whole setting was not what I expected. I thought it was going to be taking place in like this cute, you know, beach town somewhere in Italy, but it was really full of violence and gangsters and like what? So that was my biggest disappointment, unfortunately. But then number six is biggest surprise of the year. For this one, I'm going with Wayward by Amelia Hart. I did not really expect anything from this book, but I thought it was so freaking good. It follows three different women in three different time periods. And it's all about how they are connected you know, through generations with a type of magical realism touch to it as well. I thought it was so good, very big surprise. So highly recommend this one. This cover is also freaking gorgeous. Then your favorite new author, a debut or new to you. I believe this is actually a debut author as well. Eliza Clark, she wrote Boy Parts. This was a very kind of unhinged female character book, but I loved it a lot. I thought her writing style was great. I thought her characters were super interesting and just the plot as well. This is, I believe, her debut novel and she has released a new one or will be releasing a new one very soon, which I'm also really interested in reading. So if you're looking for a cool unhinged book, this is definitely um, the one for you. It's about a girl who obsessively takes explicit photographs of average looking men who she persuades to model for her and then she finds this one guy and it's becoming interesting. This is a good one. Your newest fictional crush. Well, the thing is, I don't really crush that easily on fictional characters in books, more when I can see their body language and stuff in films. So I don't really have a new fictional crush. But the next question is newest favorite character. And I think one of my new favorite characters is Ryden Grace from Project Hail Mary. I think Andy Weir can write very interesting characters, male characters. He's not very good at writing female characters because his other book, Artemis, was about a female main character. Did not enjoy that one. He doesn't really know that much about writing women. But writing male characters, he's very good at. I always enjoy reading about them because they always feel very determined, smart and funny and they have a good heart. So I think Ryan Grace is definitely a character that I really liked reading about. Okay, and I'm going to give another honorable mention to Betty, because Betty was such a strong, inspiring girl fighting for what she wants in a world that is very 
harsh for her. This takes place in 1954 and born in a bathtub in 1954 to a white mother and a Cherokee father, Betty inhabits a world of poverty and loss of lush landscapes and blazing stars. And this really follows her life growing up in a world that is very, very harsh for her because of racism, because of poverty. She really is trying to make the best of it, going through so much horrible stuff. This is actually based on real events and I really admire these strong girls like Betty. So definitely an honorable mention. Then a book that made you cry. Well, this is very original, but I'm going to be mentioning two books that I literally just mentioned, namely Betty and Project Hail Mary. They both made me cry. <laughs> These are the only two books this year that made me tear up a bit. So yeah. Then Eleven is a book that made you happy. For this one, I'm going with Dear Dolly. This is also by Dolly Alderton. These are all letters that people wrote to her asking questions about relationships, about life, about sex, friendship, whatever you can think of. And she replies with her always very thought out and well-rounded answers. She is a very inspiring woman and I love that she has so many good thoughts about life as a young woman and dealing with stuff. And even though some topics in here were definitely quite, you know, harsh, I feel like she can always end it on a positive note with some very good advice. So reading this made me very happy and made me feel very connected to all the people in this book, which definitely made me very happy. The most beautiful book you've bought so far this year or received. I haven't really bought that many books this year, but one book that is just very special to me and that I think looks really cool is this edition of The Picture of Dorian Gray. This is an edition all the way back from 1983. It doesn't even have like a barcode and it used to be £1.35. Well, if that was still the case, my bookshelf will be overflowing, but I got this book from my boyfriend as a gift because we both talked about how we thought this edition was really cool and then we accidentally ended up buying it for each other, finding it online on Etsy, without either of us knowing it from each other, which was very special and a very fun moment because we both gifted each other the same book. So that is why this is my most special book that I got this year and it looks really cool and creepy. And lastly is what books do you need to read by the end of the year? Basically my entire shelf would be lovely. <laughs> I'm doing a series on my YouTube channel about trying to read my entire TBR, of trying to read as many books basically of my physical TBR and it's going really well. In my last video during my bookshelf reorganization I also did a book unhaul and I will check how many books I've got left on my TBR because I made an entire list in Notion of all of my unread books. I currently still have 88 unread books which I'm very happy about because it used to be a hundred or over a hundred a couple of weeks ago and yes I did unhaul a few books that I hadn't read yet but that also means that my TBR is shrinking so there are just definitely many that I would like to read by the end of the year. I'm going to grab a few that I'm interested in. Okay I have three. Well since summer is kind of ending a little bit and autumn is near I am really interested in reading House of Leaves. This super weirdly written book <laughs> is I believe quite creepy thriller-ish. Honestly have no clue where you know what it's about what to expect but it gives me autumn and creepy vibes and I think that it will be perfect for when it's gloomy and cold outside. So definitely this one. Also this one is called Body Kintsugi by Senka Marik. And this is about the Japanese art of Kintsugi, which is the art of repairing broken ceramics with liquid gold to highlight and celebrate an object's past. In this powerful and personal novella, Senka Marik uses the concept of Kintsugi to interrogate ideas of illness, survival and recovery. Also just sounds really good. So definitely this one as well. And lastly, Moon Tiger by Penelope Lively. I'm sorry, but this cover is so freaking gorgeous. Oh my goodness. All of these Penguin editions are amazing. It says it leaves its traces in the air long after you've put it away. I'm not going to read the back of it because I kind of want to go into it not knowing what to expect. But also this one because it gives me, again, autumn vibes. Even though it looks kind of summery with her very thin pajamas, but she also kind of looks dead now that I look at it more. Um, yeah, I don't know what to expect. Well, this was the mid-year book freak attack, including some statistics. So I really hope you liked this video. Let me know some of your favorite books that you've read this year or books that you're interested in reading. Or if you don't know what to comment, you can also comment a little 
tiger emoji because of moon tiger or like a moon and a tiger emoji to create moon tiger i think that's a fun one um so yeah a moon and a tiger thank you again so much for watching please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you want to see more videos and i really hope you're having a beautiful day and i'll see you in my next video Bye.